Hello everybody, it is me, Pacific, and this subject's going to heat things up really good. 101 degrees yesterday, so shirtless in Seattle, except we're not in Seattle, but hey. Today I want to talk about blame. This last week, I know somebody personally who's going through quite a bit of struggle with an ex-spouse. That spouse has been divorced from this person for six years. That spouse is continually blaming all of the problems on the child that they both had, saying that it's all your fault to the male because he left the marriage. And that was six years ago. Since the child has been under her care, the child has been getting into trouble with the law, grades have plummeted, room isn't getting clean, stuff isn't getting done, kids running out late at night, and the police find them, pass curfew, call the mother, the mother has to go get them. Ironically, the mother continues to blame the ex. The ex has been in touch with the son, the ex has moved around, the ex is not a deadbeat, but the ex has tried to do the best he can under the circumstances. The ex moved back to town to be with his son a year ago, and still the blame continues. After hearing the story of this individual, it was found out that the mother uses language and calls the kids names of profanity, has her unstable, medicated 70-year-old friend, whose own daughter turned into a prostitute and has nothing to do with her mother, this woman come over and yelled and screamed at this young man, putting him down, saying things like, If you were my boy, I'd whoop your ASS and have you put in jail. Well, he's not your boy. The mother was doing things like getting counseling sessions and not allowing the father to come to the counseling sessions. And then when the father was trying to get involved in the counseling sessions, his right was denied until the father found out that because he has joint custody, he can refuse the right to counsel, and he did, and shut it down, and the woman was furious, started taking out her anger on the kid. Why am I talking about blame? Because women love to use males as a scapegoat. Just this week, this is dedicated to you, my friend, in Louisiana, Burn the Ender out a video and in it he spoke quite a bit of truth and guess what people were so angry at him they couldn't stand what he had to say so this is dedicated to burn the ender and he makes some interesting points that I'm going to piggyback on and he says why is it that when women get pregnant and a man leaves for the next 30 years, we've got to hear about the man who left, the man who left, and the kids get to hear about the man who left. Your dad was an idiot. Your dad was an idiot. You know, something that I learned that was really profound, that was quite a revelation of enlightenment to me, is that when a woman has sex with a man, it isn't just the man who has the sex. The woman's having the sex, too. Interestingly enough, that the woman made a choice to have sex with the man, the woman had a choice and a say to get involved with the man. Did she check him out to make sure he'd stick around? Doesn't sound like it. Now, does this mean that men are absolved of all guilt? Of course not. But I've heard all my life stories of deadbeat dads and men are bad and men are this and men are that and the kids grow up without dad. Well, I will say something. Women tend to be more nurturing than us guys. That is true. When it comes to raising children, men do not do a good job, per se, of nurturing and raising the kids. I was a stay-at-home dad for six years at the request of my then wife. And I did the best I could. It's a good thing. My son got the discipline he needed for those six years and some foundations were built. I have divorced. And divorce does have its toll. However, however, for women to constantly blame the man for leaving the marriage when they've had custody of this child and the child starts doing things, that isn't going to fly. I have friends in the Philippines 
who told me, I talked to one, who told me directly when I told her about the problems I was having with an ex-spouse, blaming, blaming, blaming. I left the marriage. I left to get away from her because I couldn't stand her. 14 years of her blaming, accusing, never saying I'm sorry. I'd had enough. I said, my gosh, I stayed in it for 14 years. I didn't just do this for six months and say, ha, I'm out of here and jet out. No, 14 years. My friend said, Pacific, in the Philippines, when we go to be domestic helpers in another country to make money to support our family, whoever has the child is responsible. Whether it's the husband, whether it's the wife, whether it's our mother. If the child starts acting up and doing things, it's up to that person to get control of the problem. Now, that being said, I firmly believe as a Christian man that it takes a mother and a father, and whenever you have that damaged, there's going to be some problems. But... 50% of all marriages end in divorce, and you cannot tell me that 50% of all of those divorced people, that every one of their kids turn out to be a holy terror. I just don't believe it. There are mothers that do a dang good job raising the children. There are fathers that do a dang good job raising the children. It's time for women to stop condemning and putting down all men. But let's talk about this issue of sex. I'm tired of women having sex with men, getting passionate, not wearing a condom or wearing a condom and it punctures or whatever, and the women get pregnant. And now it's, let's be bitter against the man because the man left. What did you expect? Most men, when they have sex, it's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and they're on their way. That is just a fact of life. For men, it's the big conquer. Now, the other side of that coin is a lot of women, when a man gets intimate with that woman and they give their all to that woman in, in bed, the man is shocked to find out that that woman wasn't as nice as he thought. She thought, he thought she was, and because of that, the woman starts nagging, the woman starts bitching, the woman starts climbing all over the man, and the man can only handle so much of that. Out. When a man has a boss who is just constantly tearing him down, that man will quit that job. You see, with men, we have to have respect. So, in keeping this video as brief as I possibly can, which is very hard for Pacific to do, it's funny that when a lot of women hear the truth, they just explode. And then you got all these greeting cards and stuff that show the woman flexing her muscles and saying, I'm sorry your daddy left, so I'm the one who has to teach you how to be a man. Not one card about the women that left. Not one card about the women that have dumped on and crapped on American males. Not one. There is a slanted, biased, societal move against the American male. As a fact. By the way, somebody said something interesting to me. One of my YouTube fans left me a very intelligent comment that said, Notice, Pacific, that American men are going all over the world to marry other women, but you just don't generally see foreigners marry American women. Ah, interesting. That is true, by the way. Wonder why that is. American women say we don't want foreign men. That's not true. I do know some American women who have married foreign men, and they said that. The difference for them was night and day. They liked it. But it is interesting and it is noteworthy that when you have a society of women that are getting obese, a society of women that are living on welfare, a society of women that are just blaming men and anti-male and screaming and yelling about us and trying to become manginas, what do you expect? Men are going to say, hey, you know what? If you can't fix it, get out of here and go find a way to deal with the problem. That's the way I am. I'm a problem solver. And when I can't solve the problem, I get away from it. And what I mean by that is not running. But you can only do so much. And for us men that have been in bad relationships, let, let me use the word that women use. For us men that have been in abusive marriages, meaning where the woman abused us, tearing us down, verbally abusive. They love to use that term. Verbally abusive, by the way, guys, has been redefined as anything you say that a woman doesn't like. I'm not talking about calling her names. That's inappropriate. I'm not talking about raising your voice. That happens. And sometimes men don't even raise their voice. And women say they were verbally abusive. Verbally abusive now, you can pigeonhole this one in there. When you say something a woman does not want to hear, that is verbal abuse. Did you know that? So, if you tell a woman, hey, you got a shopping problem and you need to stop it, that's verbally abusive. If you tell the woman, you know, you're really rude to me all the time, that's verbally abusive. That is the truth. I've talked to men and women, and many women write me, by the way, viewers, for those of you women that just want to shoot me down. There's a lot of women that write me say, Pacific's telling the truth. I am not anti-female. I am anti-feminism. 
I am against feminism because feminism does not represent fairly the American male nor the American female. It makes women turn into men and hateful of men, and it's an agenda bent on destroying the family structure and the ladiness that women are supposed to be. And I look at most women today, and they're anything but ladies. And I've already covered that, so I'm not going to get into it. But women, when you go out and get pregnant, stop blaming the man for that. Most of you were not raped at gunpoint and this and that. You willingly got involved with a man. Did you check him out? Did you make sure that he was stable, that he was going to stay? Men go to sea in ships, and men tend to do things because they want freedom. If you're going to tangle up with a man, you're going to make love to him, you better make darn sure he doesn't get you pregnant. And if you're going to give your all to a man intimately, you better realize that that's the risk you take. You get involved with a man, and he jets out of the relationship. Don't be surprised. Not much more to say on this, but American women, you need to take responsibility for your actions. You need to take responsibility for yourself. You need to stop blaming males for everything. You need to stop using your children in a divorce situation as pawns to get back at your ex. That is immaturity. And it's destructive to the children where they then can carry on the baton of more self-destructive and societal bleeding problem behaviors. You know what? We all need to grow up. We all need to self-examine ourselves, men and women. We're equal in that, babes. Equal. And the thing is, if we all just learn to work together, and if you were an abusive relationship, get away from the guy. Don't whine and blather on about it for 30 years and get a bunch of women on medication and a lot of women that claim they were in abusive relationships and form a little community together. I've noticed some women that have been through a relationship that wasn't stellar, but it wasn't abusive. And then they get with other women that have truly been in abusive relationships and then that woman starts believing she was abused. You are who you hang out with. Fact. That's why Pacific doesn't hang out with a lot of people. I mean, I, I know a lot of people. I tend to hang out more with females and males. I like being a loner to some extent because it kind of clears my mind. You start getting with the peer pressure crowd thing, and then you're acting like everybody else. Not that friends are bad, but I do have some filters in my life that I have to place there because there's a lot of poison. I have been the victim of a lot of blame. My mother that raised me, everything was my fault. My mother blamed their, the lack of love in her marriage with her husband on me. This is my adopted parents. Interestingly enough, I haven't lived near those people since 1989. They bought a house. She had an addition built on the back of the house, and she has put him in the back of the house. And They don't sleep together. They don't do anything together. That's my fault, really. I grew up with so much blame. It wasn't even funny. I grew up with blame where the mother blamed me for everything. Ironically, she adopted me. Ironically, she couldn't handle raising boys. And instead of admitting that, instead of being honest, instead of trying to form a bond with me, she put a catch on my door for 10 years. I would come home from school and I was locked promptly into my bedroom. I told you in another video about the abuse I suffered. This is not a victim video. I don't sit around blaming all the problems in society on women because of what I went through. I still date women. I still try to meet women. The gal I dated... And gals that I've dated, there's things that happen. And some relationships work out. Some you realize you cannot go on anymore because there's extenuating, excuse me, extenuating circumstances that are just not fair to bring into a relationship. Other people, other children that are not your own, stuff like that, can be very tough on having a relationship with some people. My point is... American women seem to blame men more than men blame women. I don't know why that is. We all have a self, self-protecting self mechanism in us. I mean, when the ship sinks, we all want to be the first ones in the lifeboat, right? But blaming people and projecting your problems onto everybody else creates more societal woes. Specific. That's all I have to say. Women. Stop blaming us. Start looking at yourselves and take some responsibility. Please. The specifics. Signing off. Bye-bye.